In a lot of movies and video games, we see giant space stations constantly rotating to produce artificial gravity. But with real-world physics, is that even possible? What would it be like to live on such a station? How different would things be up there? Let's take a look at what would happen if we launched a ball from the center of the station. Well, counterintuitively, it doesn't seem to go in a straight line. Now let's try to launch it upwards from the station's floor. Instead of going straight up, it seems to be accelerated to one side. Curious, isn't it? Let's try to launch it forwards from the top of a building, for example. And now, backwards. Wait, now the ball seems to levitate magically above the ground. What's going on here? Now, in order to understand what is actually happening, we have to change our perspective on things. We're going to observe the motion of the ball from a stationary point outside the station. Starting with the first experiment, we launch the ball from the center of the station. As expected, the ball goes in a straight line. If we shoot it upwards from the station's floor, we can see that it also follows a linear trajectory. But, unlike what we might expect, it has an angle with respect to the local vertical. Now, shooting forward produces the result that we all expect. Finally, when the ball is launched backwards, we can observe that it still goes forwards. Do you start to see the pattern here? Let's juxtapose both points of view to convince ourselves. Wow, it really is a matter of perspective. As you can see on the right, which is called the inertial frame, the ball behaves naturally following Newton's second law of mechanics, which states that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. However, on the left, which is called the rotating frame, we can't directly apply this law without any modifications. Conceptually speaking, the same type of effect can be observed in an airplane during takeoff. What the passengers feel as the airplane gains speed is that they're pushed against their seat, that is, towards the rear end of the plane. But what really happens is that it's the airplane that catches up with the passenger's bodies, accelerating them forward. Here is an illustration of what happens from the airplane's perspective. The objects seem to be accelerated towards the rear end of the plane. But from a stationary point of view, it is clear that all the objects are accelerated to the right by the airplane. Now that we understand the important concept of frame and relativity, we can take a quick look at the equation of motion in a rotating frame. Easy now, don't panic, I'm not going to go into the mathematical details of it, I'm simply going to give you an idea of what can be found in it. So, you see this last term? It's called the Euler acceleration. It's basically what happens in the airplane during takeoff, but in the presence of an angular acceleration. In our example, we consider the rotation of the station to be constant, so we can actually throw it away. The last term of the equation is now what is called the centrifugal acceleration. It's basically what generates the impression of artificial gravity. It depends on the radius, so the further away from the axis of rotation you are, the more artificial gravity you experience. The term on the left is the one that we are really interested in today. It describes the Coriolis acceleration. That's the thing responsible for the strange behavior of objects in a rotating frame. Now, let's try to visualize it with a concrete example. Here, we have a series of boxes. They are all launched with a different initial velocity. The one on the left is simply dropped, whereas the one on the right is launched upwards. Let's take a closer look at the trajectories. We can observe that they all bend to the left, but the box on the right went the other way first. That's because the Coriolis acceleration always operates with a 90 degree angle to the velocity vector, just like shown here. Because of this, the direction in which objects are moving changes the way they behave. Look at this other example. Throwing the projectile from the left just knocks off the boxes down. Nothing special here. But if we launch it from the other side, things happily fly around. And to help us really see the difference, I added in orange what will happen on the surface of the Earth. As you can see, while almost all the orange boxes are already sliding on the ground, the white boxes are flying away due to the Coriolis acceleration. 
In this example, well, nothing. I just thought it looked cool. Enjoy the show! On to the last example. Because we are in a rotating frame, things do not behave in the most intuitive of ways. In order to hit that wall of bricks, we need to shoot the projectile in a specific direction. Alright, now it's your turn. Let's see if you can guess how the projectile needs to be launched from this position. I'll give you a moment to think about it and write it down in the comments. Go ahead, don't be shy. And don't cheat. I'll wait for you. Okay, we're back. So, what direction did you choose? Are you sure of your choice? Okay, well, I also chose the direction. Let's see how good it turns out to be. I'm gonna shoot it mostly to the left. Boom! Ha ha ha! Awesome! If you wonder how I did it, I encourage you to watch my other video dedicated to it. So, to wrap this up, imagine you are living in such a station. You're about to climb on the Circum bus. You know that bus that goes all around the station's circumference. If it goes in the direction of the rotation of the station, you will feel pushed down, as if you suddenly waited more than usual. However, if the bus goes in the opposite direction, you will feel as light as a feather. If you move in a parallel motion to the axis of rotation, you would not feel the Coriolis acceleration, as it is zero in this case. Finally, if you take an elevator to go up towards the center of the station, you will feel pushed to the side. And that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more interesting space science videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace! Oh, I got to know. Are we lost? Are we not?